if you need it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure to be able to preach and share for what I learned from the Bible. Um, and I'm not the best speaker, but hey, if God could use me, God could use anybody. All right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so you're there in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Um, we we'll start reading in verse 32. By reading, and what and what shall I say more? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, and of uh, of David also, and Samuel, and the prophets, whom through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promise, promises, stopped the mouth of lions, and quenched the violence of fire, uh, of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed vigilant in fight, turned the flight, the armies of the aliens, women receiving their dead, to rise to life again, and other was tortured and not accepted deliver, uh, deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. So the title of my sermon, Obtain a Better Resurrection. Obtain me to get or inquire or secure, right? So how do we attain a better resurrection? You know, the answer comes, uh, comes uh, the answer is by serving the Lord, you know, Jesus Christ. And the Bible said this, you know, uh, well, even that, like serving God, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of ways you can serve God. As long as you're further in the kingdom of God, I, I believe that's called serving. All right. And I, I think uh, that one of the best examples we can use is soul winning. I know we talk about soul winning every Sunday, all the time, but. Uh, we need to emphasize soul because it's, it's one of the key points of Christianity is to be able to share the hope that's in us to the lost and dying world. And uh, the Bible said this in Proverbs chapter 11, verse thir- uh, 30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth soul is wise. So when you win soul, the Bible says you become wise. And Daniel chapter, one, uh, chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness, is, I mean, righteousness as the star forever and ever. So look, when you go out so and hey, the Bible says you become wise, and when you become wise, you shine bright. You know, the more you do for God, the brighter you get. Uh, and look, the world has their own star, right? You're talking about Hollywood people, like famous people, or like, what to give them a star on the ground so people walk up on uh, walk all over them like that? Now, that's that's a dishonor. I mean, dishonoring them, right? But here's in the Bible uh, uh, tell us that the star, you know, um, usually when God describes stars, the one that shine up uh, up in the uh, sky so we can see and the beauty, right? But look, the Bible says uh, that in Hebrew, you know, these people are the uh, the star. That's why they are in the hall of faith. You know, these people made it. And you no, know, we can all make it too. So let's uh, let's let's ask this question: you know, What makes them great? I believe this is the answer to what make these these great men, uh, you know, uh, are that are in the hall of fame. So in Ezekiel, if you turn to Ezekiel chapter twenty-two, verse thirty. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter twenty-two, verse thirty. I practice a lot, so. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. So, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, the Bible says, I saw four men among them that they shall make up the hedge and, is, and stand in the gap before me for the Lord, I mean, for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So, look, you know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. That he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So, you know, God has a white field of people that need to be uh, harvested, but there's not enough people. So that's why I believe these, that's why in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, what makes these men so great is that they are willing to stand in the gap. You know, Moses stand in the gap between God and the Israelite. Jesus himself was a mediator between God and men. So that's why they make them uh, so great. But first, you know, let me say this by saying, uh, in order to even take part in the better resurrection, you no, know, we understand that we have to be saved first. Now that's just a given. 
Because the Bible says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the thing of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So it is hidden to them. So, so we look at Matthew, uh, not Matthew, uh, Hebrew chapter 11, we know that these great men are doing great things because they are willing to stand in the gap uh, for God. So I want uh, tonight. I want to look into uh, the characteristic of these people, the future, the quality of these people. You know what make them great, uh, great men and women. Because the Bible to also you know give us example even women. You know it's not just men. You know a story like uh, Jill and uh, Deborah. You know Ruth is also a great lady too. Uh, you know who did great things. So tonight I want to show you from uh, actually yeah. So my first, I have three point, you know, everybody's preaching on three point. Uh, so I have to keep it the same. But the Bible says, you know, the threefold core is not easily broken. The Trinity, you know. Uh, so I want to give you three point on this. So the, my first point is motivated. So, you know, these people are self-motivators. You know, they are, they are motivated. You know, you can find, I believe you can find motivation wherever you look. Honestly, you know, you can find it by reading your Bible. You know, the Bible motivates you to, uh, to, to keep running the Christian life, right? And your family or friends. And even God, you know, God is probably one of the most important things in our life. Like, what motivates us to serve Him is through Him. So, so I want to give you this uh, verse, uh, even good preaching too. Um, so, I want to give you a verse... Actually, yeah, I will give you this verse. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. The Bible says, "For God hath not given the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and a sound mind." So having a hard, so a sound mean hard mind, so a strong mind. So these people are self motivated because they have a strong mind. Um, even even in Titus chapter two verse six, young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. The urge and courage to be serious. You know, the people that are that are self-motivated are the one that are going to get things done. All right. So let's look at, look at some example. Uh, we're not going to read uh, what this scripture, but you guys can turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Uh, I'll just give you the uh, short version of this one. Uh, for example, from the lady size, I guess, uh, you know, Proverbs 31. You know, every man wants a Proverbs 31 woman, right? So let's look at what kind of uh, person she is. I'll just give you what she, uh, but you can find this in Proverbs 31, verse 13 through 27. But it says, she seeketh, she riseth, she considereth, she girdeth, she perceiveth, she layeth, she strengtheth, she maketh, she openeth. You know, talk about being a woman. That's a lot, <laughs> right? This is one self-motivated <laughs> woman because, you know, what motivated her was her husband. No, that has her family. So I want to look at a different example uh, from the story of David here. And um, but the back story is before we read uh, verse thirty. You know the back story of David is that you know him and his men were uh, were dwelling in the land of the Philistine, uh, and they were hanging out with uh, Achish. And uh, so when uh, when the uh, the prince of the Philistines saw Achish with David. Uh, they told him, hey, he can't be here with us because Israel, at that time Israel was warring with the Israelites. And uh, so they were afraid that if David was with us, that if they go to war with the Israelites, that he might turn against them. So they were afraid of him like that. So, you know, they told Achish to tell David, hey, you need to tell David and his men to leave, uh, to go back to the land. So the story pick up in... Uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1, the Bible read, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Zeglech on the third day, that the Amalekites uh, have invaded the south, and Zeglech and smitten Zeglech and burned it with fire. And he had taken the woman captive that were therein. They slew not any, neither great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and, and their daughters were taken captive. When David and the when David and the people that were with him, uh, with him, lift up their voice 
and wept until they have no more no more power to weep. And David, two wives who were taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Ab Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the uh, Carmelites. And David were greatly distressed, for the people speak of stoning him, because the soul of the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So we can see here, you know, so the, the people here, you know, they saw that their wives and the children are taken away. And they, and they, you know, th their attitude was, um, in order, I mean, they didn't take their frustration out, they didn't take out their frustration on David, you know. So, what made David, uh, what made David uh, such a great example of being able to, uh, uh, to be a self-motivator is that he's able to encourage himself uh, in the Lord. So, he wasn't like depressed, you know. So we can look here, you know, the men were showing great depress of their wives and the children taken away uh, from them. So, uh, you know, when people are usually uh, uh, distressed or usually when you're distressed, you can become depressed too, right? And when people are de uh, depressed, they usually either they, uh, they, get, uh, they give up or they get out of it, right? And, uh, you know, this is actually a really good example from David's point of view is that um, if you are depressed, if you are going through depressed, you know you need to go to God first, uh, and don't use it, uh, the distraction as a way out. Like for example, you know the story from uh, King Saul. You know when he got the uh, evil spirit. Instead of going to God about it, he used music as an example to get uh, at, to use music as, as an example. But we can see that that didn't work for him, did it? No, so that's why he, David shows us that we, hey, we need to go to God first and don't let adversity bring us down. So that's my first, my uh, that's my one side. So I want to show you both sides. So the the first side is being motivated. So what is the opposite of being, uh, what is the opposite of being motivated? It's laziness, right? We cannot preach enough about laziness, you know, uh, especially today. We have way too many men that are, uh, uh, foolish, or we could call it like man child, they call it right because the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, say, When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understand as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish thing. Today, we have way too many men who still playing their video game like they're a little child, right? And that's very wicked because the Bible, if, if you go to Proverbs chapter 6 here. Because the Bible said this, uh, I'll tell you here, the Bible says that for when we were with you, uh, this we commend you, that if any would not work, neither shall he eat. So God is saying, hey, if you're not willing to work, you're not going to eat. That's how serious God is about being lazy. Uh, lazy. So go to Proverbs chapter 6. When we read uh, uh, verse 6 through 11, the Bible reads uh, this. Go to the end, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise, which have no guides, overseer or ruler, provided her meat in the summer, and gathereth her uh, food in the harvest. In the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O slugger? When will thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand, to sleep, so shall thy property come as one that uh, travaileth, and they and thy one as an armed man. So God is very serious about this. How I mean, how how bad is it that you have to go watch an ant to tell you how to work? You know that's pretty that's pretty bad because you know it's not hard to find a job. The job is like anywhere. You just go. You just gotta be willing to go. You gotta be self motivated to be able to go out and find a job. Uh, but it's easy. So the Bible said this in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, said, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has, the, uh, he has denied the faith and is worse than infidel. Now that's an insult. Uh, Brother Gabriel preached about it, uh, uh, being an infidel. You know, a man uh, being able, uh, supposed to provide for his family. So... That's my first point. My second point is this: endurance, uh, endurance, suffering. You know, something that is painful, difficult, 
with patient, patiently. So this person is Paul. You guys go to actually go to Matthew 24. So enduring, uh, enduring suffering. You know, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul was, about, uh, it says, you know, Paul was shipwrecked. He was beaten. You know, uh, there's a lot of things, you know, not having anything, but he still moves on forward. You know, it, I mean, it, he keeps moving forward. He has a lot of motivation to go through a hardship, you know. So he, that's why in Hebrew chapter, uh, in the book of Hebrew, you know, when the Bible says that they have trial of cruel mocking and scourging, bonds and imprisonment, they were stoned, they were swollen asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword, they were uh, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, uh, tortured. You know, these people go through hard stuff. You know, we can look that. We can look from the, I mean, from the book of Genesis to even the end of the book. You know, we always see people going through hard time, but it take, but also, but it take endurance to be able to do that. And the uh, the Bible says this in Second uh, Timothy chapter three verse twelve. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now there will come a day when we will have to endure hardship. And you guys in Matthew 24, I'm going to read from you verse 21. The Bible says, For then shall be, a, shall be great tribulation, such as, will, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. So God is saying, hey, one day we know that there's going to be a great tribulation that the world have never seen before, or there's going to be any afterward either. Um, and it's going to be so great, the Bible says. Um, so, why I'm preaching on this is because we need to understand how to, uh, that we need to endure. And uh, Matthew, uh, if you guys go up to Matthew, uh, you still in Matthew 24, but verse 9, the Bible says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall, have, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I say, so this year, I mean, I know that this year has been crazy with COVID and murder and B and Biden, you know, <laughs> all the, <laughs> with everything. But, uh, you know, what's, uh, I mean, in two days, what's next? Santa Claus with his reindeer taking over the world? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, look, on the bright side, you know, as bad as this year has been, you know, there's not, it's not, you know, it, the, the tribulation is going to be even worse. You know, it's going to be like a hundred times worse. You know, we think of our life today as like, oh man, I can't go outside. I can't do this. I got to wear a mask. I gotta... Yes, Max is super stupid, but you know, whatever. Uh, you know, as, it's not as worse as uh, they're trying to amend a uh, vaccine, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, look at the bright side, you know, whatever. But hey, you know, when you think of your life, when you're going through a hard time, think about the people who, who's from the past that actually had a hard, harder life than we did. You know, Joe, you know, he went through some hard time. Think about you, 10 of your kids dying and you lost your job, you lost your living, pretty much everything, even your wife forsaken. You know, compared to our life, we had it pretty good, right? So the Bible said this in uh, 2 Timothy ch uh, chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, if you can't go through life boot camp, how are you going to go through a great tribulation? Right? So that's, so the opposite, so like I was saying, I was preaching both sides. So the opposite of endure is what? It's quitting. So, you know, the Bible compared the Christian life to a race, something that we can all understand. Because the Bible says in the first uh, Corinthians chapter 9 uh, you guys go to Hebrew chapter two, uh, chapter 12 but uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 know ye not that they that they which run in a race run all but one receive the pride so run that you may obtain so secure or to get now have you guys uh, I don't know about you guys but I just want to ask like anybody has run in a marathon before well, neither do I, so. <laughs> okay. so, 
you know, when you're running marathon, they say, you know, there's this quote that always remind me, it said, life is not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? <laughs> so you, when you say marathon, you want to pace yourself. So, yeah, so a, mar- a full marathon is, I think it's like, it says 20, uh, 26 point something, but I just said 26, 26 mile, right? And it takes a long time, you know, training marathon, it's not fun. I actually tried it once and it worked out. It wasn't good because I didn't want to wake up early and it was a long time. <laughs> right? I, I'm just being honest up here, right? I'm already at the altar. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's why the, uh, the marathon take a lot. It take a long time. But I actually want to give you a story. I actually did run a small uh, race. You guys remember, I don't know if you guys ever heard of, it's called the uh, like the Warrior Dash, something like the Spartan Runs, stuff like that. So, these runs are actually better in my opinion because they have obstacle on the way. You know, like I was doing it in Clay's Park, so we were able they they uh, put a line so you could uh, like swim on the lake a little bit, and also like jumping through uh, mud and all you know, jumping through fire and stuff like that, cool stuff, climbing walls and stuff. It was pretty fun because it was interesting. You know, it wasn't just like running for, like straight four hours. This is the fastest person, the fastest people we run like two hour and they're running 28 mile per hour. And that's none of American people, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're from Jamaica, just you know. <laughs> so yeah, so, so that's what, um, so, so I run in that race, you know. So I what I did was I was running. So first of all, I didn't understand why, because I don't like, I don't, for some reason I don't believe in pacing yourself. So God help me. So, so I was running really fast at the beginning so i was like sprinting i was like beating everybody i was beating the old adults you know <laughs> like yeah hey, i'm free, pretty fast so i was running really fast at first then like at the like really like after a mile i was like oh man this is suck like i was like like out of breath and i was like oh i can't breathe that much now like now i started seeing people that are past are like going in front of me now <laughs> and stuff like i, I feel kind of embarrassed because i didn't pace myself but, it, uh, but that taught me a lesson that, hey, I need to pace myself. You know, that's why in order to endure, you also got to be able to pace yourself. You know, you want to be able to uh, to not quit because the worst thing you can do is quit. Right. Because here's the thing, you know, like it or, uh, like or not, we are all in a race. It's called the human race. You know, so the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, says, there, uh, wherefore, seeing we are we also are compassed about with so great so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You know, if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with resting. Okay? Because God the Bible said, even God rested after he created the world. Alright? So don't Rest too long because the race still needs to be run. All right, so the end of Paul's life, he said this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Not only did Paul endure hardship, but he also didn't quit. Quit. Imagine, what if Paul quit, right? Mm-hmm. Is this gospel is going to go anywhere? I mean, I'm sure God will use, I'm sure God will, uh, that's why God persecuted the church. So they were just in their, uh, in their bubble, you know, that's why the Bible commanded us, hey, go to Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. So God is not a person that has a small goal. God has a big vision. So we need to have a big vision like God. So that's why I believe uh, that now, Paul uh, had a big vision. That's why he had to endure a lot because it 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 caused. I mean, it takes a lot of toll on you when you when you have to work hard. Right, your body it takes on your body, it takes on your mind. Uh, you know, we could tell even for, uh, from uh, Paul's life that he was going through a hard time. So the point is, hey, first we need to be self motivated people, and we can find motivation through Jesus Christ, right, God, and. By even like good sermons, and my second point is this. My second point was was to be able to uh, to endure hardship and hardness. So my third point is this: the attitude to a goal 
You know, attitude is a way of feeling or acting toward a person or thing or situ uh, situations. So having the right attitude. So go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> so this person that I, I want to uh, share is Jesus. You know, we already know Jesus is pretty much, we could use Jesus as the whole book, I mean the whole uh, <laughs> thing, but like <laughs> I want to give other people also examples. So use other people. So in Luke chapter 4 verse uh, 16 through 19, Tabari, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the seventh day and stood up for to read. And there was a, excuse me, and delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah's, Isaiah's. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive, and re uh, recovering the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty them that are burst, to preach the uh, acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus goal was yes he was uh, he was about healing and uh, also he was healing you know he was preaching the gospel um, he was preaching deliverance he was setting uh, you know the captive free but here's the thing Jesus uh, ultimate goal is to die for sinners and so let's um, and, and Mark, go to, actually, you guys go to uh, Philippians chapter 2. So this is Jesus' ultimate goal here in, uh, in Mark chapter 9, verse 30, 31. And they depart hence and pass through Galilee, and he would not that any man should, uh, should know it. For he had tied his, for he had tied his disciple and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hand of, of men. And they shall kill him, and after that he is after that he is killed, he shall rise again, uh, rise to uh, rise a third day. So here, the, so the ultimate goal of Jesus Christ is to die for sinners. So let's look at his attitude, right? So this is where we get to his attitude. So if you guys in Philippians chapter two, verse eight, the Bible, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So here the Bible says that he humbled himself. You know, his his attitude was he humbled himself and became obedient. You know, that's that's a, uh, I mean that's what Jesus uh, that's that's the good attitude to have. Uh, I mean I don't know about good, but like Jesus had a good attitude toward uh, death, right? And the Bible says in Luke chapter twenty two verse. Uh, 42 saying father if if thou be willing remove this cup for me nevertheless not my will but thine be done so jesus told uh jesus attitude toward the goal was that it's it's not his own but it's god you know he has the right attitude toward uh the pain that he was suffered so we need to have a good attitude so uh so the last example here i want to show you guys is this you know, so uh, the life, the, uh, go to the book of Jonah, chapter uh, chapter 1. No, Jonah is actually a really good book, you know, um, <laughs> we can look at, you know, even though he messed up. You know, when you read the book of uh, Jonah, you learn a lot about God's personality. Um, so, Jonah, chapter 1. Verse 1, the Bible read, And now the word of the Lord came, uh, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of uh, Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, cry against it, for their wickedness is come up, uh, come before me, come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord and went to, uh, down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare thereof and went down uh, into it. 
to go with them unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. So here, so Jonah added to Torah, the goal was that he was he ran away from God. So he didn't have the right attitude. So this guy did not have the right attitude toward the goal. And we can see his only good words here, you know. So in chapter, just to recap, on chapter one, you know, Jonah uh, fled from God. You know, as the story goes, he was cast into the sea and the great well, uh, the great, not well, the great fish swallowed him. And that's uh, that's in chapter one. Then when we go to chapter two, you know, uh, he prayed to God and God delivered out of the uh, out of the big fish. So in chapter, I mean, there's two things we can learn in chapter one and chapter two is that, hey, when you disobey God, you will pay the price for it, right? And the second lesson is this. Don't be the type of Christian that uh, that everything is going right in your life. You know, you don't thank God. But the moment something went downhill in your life, you start begging God to, uh, to take that away from you. So don't be that type of Christian. So pick up in uh, Jonah chapter three. You guys turn there. <clears throat> and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. So the first time he didn't listen. So, so now it's the second time. Saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day journey. And cried and said, Yet forty days and forty nine, uh, no, forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Just imagine this picture, like for a, se a second here. So God is telling, Hey, first Jonah, you need to go tell uh, the city of Nineveh uh, that what God would uh, punish them, right? First, in chapter one, we know that he fled from God, right? So the second time, just the attitude, so. The, the second guy got to him, hey, you need to go to Nineveh to preach. I feel like this is this is exactly what uh, Jonah was like, just being like dragging him's feet, right? But actually, he got there super quick, <laughs> right? A three-day journey and made it one day. <laughs> That's pretty fast. But I just imagined he preaching uh, preaching against uh, Nineveh, you know, like 40 days, 40, uh, you know, God, your city would be overthrown. Just a poor attitude you can tell by the story you read. But, but hey, it's still done, but we still need to have a good attitude toward the goal, right? Even though it's not fun, even though it's, it's not joyous, we still need to do it uh, with, uh, with love. And um, so, yeah, Jonah showed uh, a pretty bad, uh, poor attitude toward the mission and goal that God told him. So, you know, nowhere in the Bible does, this, uh, does God's, uh, God's mission is going to be easy. If it's easy, every Christian on earth would be serving God right now, right? So I want to end with this in this verse. The Bible says in 1 Peter, you guys go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I mean 15, sorry. But uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible reads, uh, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible said double-minded uh, double, uh, men is unstable in all his way. So we want to make sure that we gird up our, our, uh, gird up our mind and and not, uh, and we want to be, uh, we don't want to be double-minded, we want to be stable. We want to be sober-minded. We want to be a sound mind. You know, you can't stand in a gap if you are easily, easily, uh, you're easily uh, be able to sway, you know. You, you don't want to be uh, a double-minded person, basically, right? And especially, you want to be able to uh, to endure hardship, uh, and you want to have a good attitude toward the goal. So, and with this verse here, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, uh, 57 and 58, I think this is a, a Walter favorite verse. I think so. But it say uh, the Bible read, but thanks to uh, be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, uh, my beloved brother, uh, brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as for at, for as much as ye know 
that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So it's saying that, hey, God is saying everything we do here is not it's not vain, you know. There is a purpose to doing things. There's there's going to be rewards. So we're not laboring in vain. But we want to make sure, we want to make sure that we have a good attitude. We want to make sure that uh, we are motiv- we are motivate we motivate ourselves to keep moving forward and also to I mean continue reading I mean God's word. Um, that's where you're gonna find your motivation. And we want to make sure that uh, we have a good attitude toward the goal. And also we want to make sure that we endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. All right, so let's bow our head and pray. Father God, thank you for your today and thank you for your word, God. Uh, I pray that uh, you will help each one of us here uh, to be able to uh, to endure hardship and to have a good, atti- uh, to have a good attitude uh, toward uh Toward the thing of you, uh, to the thing for you, God, and uh, I also pray that you would uh, motivate us, and that uh, we would be a self-motivated people to uh, to get things done for you, God. We want to stand in the gap, uh, so I pray that you would give us your double spirit, uh, as Elisha got it from Elijah. Um, so thank you for the time, uh, and just pray for everyone here. And Jesus, I pray, Amen.